guys welcome back so today i am just coming back really quick it's not a huge long video but i just want to share my results um from the igenix test that i mentioned i think two videos ago um i did get those results about i think a week and a half ago um i gave <laughs> myself a minute to digest the news um, I was really upset. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Um, I do have Lyme, um, active Lyme, because uh, you can have it in your system, but inactive. So mine is active. Um, I also have the co-infection Bartonella, um, which is commonly known as cat scratch disease, um, but it's also carried by ticks and fleas and spiders. Um, so it's also a vector-borne illness. So I do have both. Um, I'm not surprised um, because I understand the symptoms and the stories I've heard. And they relatively match up pretty well to kind of my story. Um, it's just a hard pill to swallow, right? Because you know you're going to have it for a lifetime. Even if you get a tickle into remission, it's something you always have to be aware of and you may be symptomatic sometimes um it could change the direction um of my life you know uh as far as having kids or settling down or you know what my future really is gonna look like so um when i found out i was on the phone with my best friend rachel the results post on my doctor's portal so i was checking every hour for weeks um it took about three weeks uh, to get my results. Um, that was kind of the time frame that it says on the Igenix website, but you know, I was constantly checking. Um, I immediately broke down crying and then I called my family. Um, my family, certain members <laughs> were, um, someone's shock and <laughs> other ones were, um, more like concerned, you know, what can I do to help and upset by it. Um, so anyways, my tick bite, the one I'm presuming, the only one I know I've had that I know of, and not everyone gets the bullseye rash, but I did have it in 2010. Um, I was staying in a motel with my friends, um, you know, and I went home the next day and I had the rash on my back. I honestly thought it was ringworm and at the time because I was not really educated on Lyme um, I thought you know if it is a tick bite because that crossed my mind um, I'll get sick right I'll get flu like symptoms fever and then I'll know and I'll go to the doctor so um, that's kind of why I think it's important to speak out about Lyme and things and just raise awareness um, because there are, I'm sure a lot of people in my shoes could say if there was more awareness 10 years ago, five years ago, even presently, um, a lot of people could avoid becoming chronically ill. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I've been doing treatment for about a week. So what we're starting with, um, is the traditional antibiotic approach. So I'm on five antibiotics orally. Um, two of those I take every single day. Other ones are kind of like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Friday. I'll put everything below so I'm not rambling. Um, and then I'm going into the office on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'm getting Recepin through IV. Um, so I'll put everything below. That's our initial approach. We kind of said, let's see how I respond. Um, I've not taken an antibiotic since 2016. So that's kind of, I'm hoping will work in my favor um, because my body is not, you know, used to antibiotics. I don't really take them. It's not something that my body has seen a lot. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. I honestly, today is the first day that I've like put makeup on and put, I'm wearing sweatpants, but <laughs> a shirt on. Um, and honestly, I feel pretty good. I did a coffee enema this morning. Um, my doctor did request that I do at least three coffee enemas a week and at least three sauna um, a week. So I am doing that. I'm pretty much daily. I'm trying to aggressively 
make sure I'm detoxing to get everything dying out. So I am finding that when I do the sauna or do the enema, I am feeling really good for, it could be an hour to like three hours after. Um, and then I kind of start crashing again into that like fatigue category. Um, so yeah, that's everything right now. Um, a question I've gotten a little bit from people that know me that know about this are, um, or is, do I think my implants, uh, it was a mistake taking them out? Uh, no. <laughs> and I'm gonna link a video below to explain the connection. Um, still one of the best choices I've ever made. I would make it again over and over. Um, there's a lot of reasons, but basically the implants put added pressure on my immune system. My body did not like them. And I also have my gene mutation where my body cannot detox on its own. So my body struggles in general with any toxins. Um, and honestly, when they took them out, the surgeon was like, you have more inflammation than I've ever seen. And my post-op report when they sent everything out to pathology came back with a large cell reaction and something else. So, um, in short, no, I don't regret it. Um, I'll link the YouTube video below where it kind of pieces everything together. In the future, I will probably try to dive more into breast implant illness and that connection. Um, so right now, <laughs> things at hand, um, I have mold illness still as well. Um, I have not retested for mold. My doctor saw these results. We just really wanted to jump on um, the current situation, having active Lyme and Bartonella for possibly 11 years um, <laughs> is pretty extreme. So I have been treating and detoxing mold for the last almost five months. Um, so we felt like, you know, it's safe enough, obviously to proceed with the antibiotics, but I am still taking a binder um, once a day. I'm doing cholestyramine most days and then charcoal when I feel like my body has just had enough. Um, usually that's like two days a week where I just feel like I need something a little more gentle. So that's kind of the update. I will put the list below of exactly what tested positive, um, what showed up on the hygienics, um, I would tell anyone that just has a mysterious illness or they don't feel good or they're having weird problems, Igenix is very expensive, but it is so worth the money. I really can't imagine if I waited another year or two where I would be. Um, I am using a walker to get around. I'm too unstable and too weak to walk on my own. Um, with the Bartonella, a lot of the symptoms of undiagnosed Bartonella are ataxia, um, motor skill issues, balance problems, um, cognitive issues. So it's very neurological, um, which explains a lot for me. So I'm really hoping that that will be the first thing that kind of goes. Um, Cause if I could get function back, um, this would be a lot easier. <laughs> So that's kind of where I'm at. I will come back as I go through this. Um, it's really too early for me to say how I'm feeling. Um, it's very up and down and I feel nauseous most of the time um, from the amount of the antibiotics that I'm on. So, you know, if we're gonna see how this goes, I'm really hopeful. And then of course I do have um, kind of a plan B, C. D. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm just trying to stay hopeful and research and do what I can. So if you guys have any questions, you know, I'm very open. Email me, find me on Instagram, comment below. Um, I really make these videos uh, to reach people that were like me. Um, but, you know, I could never find answers or help or anyone like me. Um, so that's why I do it. So I'm definitely here. If anyone needs um, just a direction or a question or anything, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional. Um, I'm just someone that has been through it. So um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you have not already and I will see you guys next time.